The Women's Leadership Institute in the Auburn University College of Liberal Arts is pleased to present Leaders Educating Through Discussion. We hope you will take a moment after you watch our presentation to add your own voice to the dialogue on our website, auburn.edu slash women's leadership. Well, I know y'all are very glad that I'm here, not because it's me, but because I'm the last panelist for today. <laughs> so have a very long day. Thank you so much for sticking around and listening to what we have to say. Um, as Kimi said, I am just one year out of school, so I don't really have as much advice and wisdom to give as, as these ladies, but um, I feel like I can relate to you who are still in college because I was in your shoes just a couple of years ago. So. Um, Thank you for giving me the opportunity to come today and speak with you. Um, just a little background on myself. I've always been passionate about involvement in service organizations in high school. I'm a Q club and SGA, and when I came to Auburn, I'm the only one to dive right into that. Um, so I really got involved, first of all, with Habitat for Humanity and Student Government Association. So I served as president of Habitat my sophomore year, which was um, an incredible role and very challenging. And one of the most meaningful positions I've ever served in. And I was in SGA cabinet and Senate, and then my junior year decided, um, after a rumor started that I was considering running for SGA president, I decided to consider it seriously and started thinking and praying about it and consulting with my mentors who encouraged me to do it. Um, and as Kimmy said, there had only been one female SGA president in Auburn's history, and that was in 1988. So it's been quite a while, and um, as many of you, if any of you go to Auburn or from the Southeast, you know, it's a pretty conservative and traditional region. Um, so I knew it would be a little bit of a challenge, but I had many incredible friends supporting me, um, just a great campaign staff, and it worked out, and I was very blessed to, to serve in that role for a year. And my biggest initiative, uh, just on the side, of I campaign for a new student recreation and wellness center that we're getting and that was very exciting to be a part of that and to work with administration here at Auburn. Um, it was just an incredible role and you, you met Mary Ellen Baby earlier and I was privileged to serve on her national search committee. So just was able to take part in some incredible things going on and I'm so thankful for that. And then just to fast forward to now, I live in Washington, D.C. I've been there since I graduated last summer and I'm a research assistant at a very small lobby firm we actually represent Auburn. That's how I originally got the job. But we have clients that range from Auburn to Amazon.com to Fox Food Companies to the American Sport Fishing Association. So a little bit of everything, and it's been um, it's been an interesting year and a challenging year, which I'll get to in, in a minute. But uh, I've always had an, an interest in government and politics, somewhat of a love-hate relationship with it, I would say. Um, many of you know how, how tough politics can be, but I just think there's so much opportunity to do good through it. So I decided to dive right in to the Washington, D.C. scene out of college. Um, and now I'll just go to a little bit of advice that, that may be helpful for you who are getting ready to move into the real world in the next couple of years. Um, first of all, just as, as a woman in a leadership role, I feel like a little bit of a has been right now because I'm not really in a leadership role now, but I have been here at Auburn. Um, so just first piece of advice, uh, it's just so important to have confidence in yourself and in your style of leadership. Um, that's one thing I got asked a lot throughout the years, you know, if you feel like you're being treated fairly as a woman, you think people are treating you as if they treated the men who have served in your role. And honestly, I did. I, I felt like I was treated with great respect the whole year. And, and I think part of that is, is I tried to always be confident in myself um, and to just portray comfort in my role. Um, but, you know, I was there for a reason. I was doing that job for a reason. I was excited about it, and I was confident in it. Um, so just having that confidence, I, I think, will get you so far. Um, second, give others the respect they deserve, and, and it will be given back to you. Well, Cobb said earlier when she was talking about the good old boys club, um, don't try to break it up <laughs> because those people are there for a reason and they're probably you know, great leaders. So I think that they deserve respect and if you pay them that, then they'll, they'll give it right back to you. Um, third, this has been said probably by many, many of the 
speakers, but just stay true to yourself and your values. Um, that can be something that's very tough when you get thrown into a leadership role, and especially now that I'm in D.C. when you're surrounded by very powerful people. Um, people tend to compromise a lot of their morals and their values. So I just encourage you not to fall into the status quo, but to, to stand up for what you believe in and to stand firm in your values and your beliefs. Uh, fourth, to pursue your passions. Um, we all have our passions for a reason, I believe. And, you know, whether that's politics or law or healthcare or education, um, just to find out what you're passionate about and to pursue it. And also to be, utilize the leadership skills that you're given. Um, and it may not always be in the way that you expect. For example, right now, I'm in a great position at the lobby firm. Um, I'm exposed to so much about politics. And, and I feel like I'm there for a reason. I'm learning a lot that's going to prepare me for leadership positions down the road. But I'm honestly not that passionate about researching, which is what I do a lot of the day. Um, so one way that I like to, to utilize my leadership skills, I work with a group of 17-year-old girls out at a church in Virginia. So I have about 10 girls that I help mentor. And I love that work. I'm passionate about it. But I do it in my free time because I feel like, you know, I've been given those skills for reasons that's just a way that I can use that as well on being prepared other ways to work for future leadership roles down the road. And then last, um, appreciate the challenges along the way. As I mentioned earlier, um, this year has been a challenge for me in D.C. You know, politics is not um, what we're taught it is in textbooks. It's not always as clean and ethical as I think it should be. So it's been tough to go from Auburn, which can be a somewhat um, somewhat of a bubble, I think, from the rest of the world. And, um, it's a wonderful place. I love my time here. We're being thrown in, into the deep end of the politics. It's been tough. But I'm so appreciative for what I'm seeing right now because I know that's going to prepare me um, for the roles again that I'm hopefully going to hold down the road. Um, and looking back on my time at Auburn, I'm so thankful for the challenges that I faced in my first few years at Auburn because I think it helped me to be a more effective leader um, as a student president and the other roles. So I've just I've learned that, you know, our mountain tops are great, the valleys are just as important, and um, I just appreciate those so much because looking back on the successes in my life, I've come to appreciate um, those times that were really tough and prepared me for those successes. So just to, to appreciate all the, all the things we go through.